Life Audio. Just ahead on encouragement for you, Chick-fil-A's Dan Cathy talks about encouragement. And Christian psychiatrist Dr. Frank Menrith provides insight into overcoming depression. Welcome to the Encouragement for You podcast, brought to you by Encouragement Communications in association with the Salem Web Network and is part of the Life Audio Faith Toolkit series. For more inspirational, faith-affirming podcasts, visit lifeaudio.com. In just a moment, your host, Don Hawkins, will introduce today's episode. First, a word from our sponsors. Encouragement for you host, Don Hawkins, longtime Chick-fil-A CEO Dan Cathy has a gift for encouraging people. During our first segment, the two of them discuss this important subject. Recently, we caught up with Dan in Louisville, Kentucky, and the first person who joins Dan and me is Tracy Sims, a longtime friend of the Cathy family. Tracy is, uh, has just started a church eight years ago, has did a church plant. He's here with us here. And Tracy is one of these young men who came from a, a broken home, um, a, a, just, a, you know, just not a good home situation, that my dad just seems over, the, over his lifetime has always been a drawn to young men who need an encouragement, who came from a, maybe a, a, a negative thinking bad home situation, hmm. and so uh, we just are so thankful for Tracy's life and for the opportunity and the influence that he's had on our life as well, and so Tracy, we're delighted to have you here with us, yes. and uh, he's pastoring a church here. Tell me what is the biggest challenge about starting a new church? It seems to me that there's a lot in common with starting a new church and getting an airplane off the ground. That's a good um analogy um because it is it takes a lot of um momentum at the beginning to get this thing going but then it takes a whole lot to keep it going and yeah. ultimately we we were relying upon the holy spirit for all of that because we believe that god ordained us to start this work to reach those that were not being reached um we jokingly tell everyone that we take the other churches rejects um <laughs> you know we we have a statement that our church is different on purpose yeah. It's our desire to reach out to those that just don't fit in, um, literally those that are on the outcast, those who have had a bad experience with church, or those who've come from situations similar to my own, because um, there's so many out there that um, would judge us and say, well, you must have had a perfect life because you're a pastor or you, you, you're a businessman or whatever your profession is, and people assume that because your life seems like it's in order now that it must have always been that way, but... What they don't know is what God has done to bring you to the point where you are. You know, in high school, I've never dreamed of being a pastor. I was um, very shy and backwards and um, never really wanted to be in front of anybody um, to speak. But that's where God calls you. He calls those things that um, are not as though they were. And um, he gives you the strength to do what you feel you're incapable of so that he gets the glory. And um, and that, that's what I see. So that's the joy for me and the joy in seeing lives change through the power of the gospel, um, to see broken homes restored, to see people without hope find hope and purpose and meaning, and yeah. you know, uh, to see young people who um, will travel 40, uh, 50 minutes just to come to a, a new church where we don't have a whole lot to offer, but to say, this is where I find hope, and this is where I find my meaning and purpose in life, and um, we have seen so many great things, and our church, um, as as a start, is unlike a lot. We never had a sponsored church. Uh, we it, we weren't a mega church start or anything like that. We were just a group of people that got together and said, we want to begin a new work, and um, and that's what we've done without a sponsoring church, without mm. any su- support from outside. But you've had support from the Lord, right? Oh, absolutely. We've <laughs> had the support from the Lord, and, um, and, and that's been the exciting thing because, again, when we step back, there's no one person can take credit for this yeah. work or for anything that's happened other than the Lord. And yeah. so that's all you need in, in life, not just as a pastor yeah. or as a person working in business or teachers or, or soldiers or whatever your calling in life is. All of us have to depend on the Lord as our calling. And, um, and, and I believe that one of my primary 
roles as a pastor is to equip other Christians to do the service of the Lord, to do the ministry. It's not my job to do it all, and um, and that's what we're trying to do is reach those and, and train them up and, and equip them to serve the Lord through ministry. And, um, hmm. and, and through these years, I've been blessed with some wonderful, godly people that have helped me, that have steered me in the right hmm. way, and coming from a a, a situation where um, I lived in 12 foster homes and a children's home and being able to meet someone such as Truett Cathy and to, yeah. to be taken into his family um, has opened up so many opportunities for me yeah. um, to be where I am today. And, and, I, and this June I'll celebrate 18 years of marriage and I have three wonderful kids. Yeah. And, and that says a lot considering the family that I didn't have growing up. And, well, and I just give God the glory yeah. of how he used the Cathy's and Truett Cathy in particular to, to enrich my life and bless me in the ways that he has. Boy, Tracy, you've covered a lot of ground and done so wonderfully. And you brought up a concept that I think is so important, and that is this concept of equipping. Uh, there's so much in Scripture about equipping. Uh, the word that's found in Ephesians 4 and the passage that you quoted about equipping the saints so that they can do the work of ministry uh, is a word that could be used of mending nets. It was used of uh, Peter, for example, and Andrew and James and John mending uh, their nets was used of setting a broken bone, a physician like Luke. It was used for outfitting a ship like Paul would sail on. Mm-hmm. And it was used in a variety of ways. And and I think that uh, it's a unique pastoral function uh, to be able to equip folks to do that work of ministry. Dan, that brings up another important observation, and that is that even though your calling is to be the president of Chick-fil-A and Tracy's calling is to be the pastor of his church, uh, both of you are called into full-time ministry, right? Well, that's, that's the only kind of ministry there is. I mean, when we invite Christ into our life, it's not a part-time occupation. It's, it's a full-time uh, in morning, noon, and night, no matter where we are, God wants to use us. We're on mission, and, and God wants to use us. You know, God's in, His intended purpose is the relationship that He wants to have with all of us. Yeah, and, and whatever it takes is that relationship, and, and He can work through those hard times to build a closer, more intimate relationship. And I hope that our a nation, that we're going to be more mm-hmm. prayerful, uh, more dependent, and acknowledge that there is a God in heaven that loves us all. It wants to give us wisdom and direction and purpose and meaning for our life. Probably 100% of us have been affected to some degree or another or know somebody who's been affected by the adversity in our country. And Dan, two passages of Scripture have come to mind. One is Job 23.10, where Job, in the middle of all of his trouble and his adversity, uh, literally rises to the surface and says, but he knows the way that I take. When he has tested me, I shall come forth as gold. Uh, That verse indicates that Job finally realized that God had a gracious purpose in the testing in his life, that God was behind it, and that God's intention was good. And and the other thing that comes to mind is 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. And those verses talk about the God of all encouragement who encourages us in all our trouble so that we can encourage others who are in any trouble. We'll be back with more after a brief word from our sponsors. And don't forget to listen for Dawn's live weekend talk show, Encouragement Live, heard Saturdays at 7.05 p.m. Central Time on American Family Radio and other radio stations around the country, as well as on the worshipchannel.org. Have you or someone you know been struggling with depression? If so, according to the late Dr. Frank Minrith, there's help and hope available. Dr. Minrith and host Don Hawkins respond to callers who are asking about the subject of depression. Dr. Minrith has been with us many times and answers listener questions on today's topic about the subject of depression. Thanks for calling, Doug. Go ahead. Well, um, I'm concerned about uh, for myself... uh, Depression has been a concern of mine. Um, probably started, oh, maybe four or five years ago when my parents were killed in a car accident. Hmm. Since then, I've never really slept very good. A year ago, I, I lost my job without really satisfactory explanation, one that I'd been at for 20 years. And... Uh, I really, I don't sleep. I, I just, I just can't ever sleep almost without taking some type of sleep aid. And 
And I used to be a very confident person, and now I feel like, well, I don't know if there's anything I can do anymore. Mm. I'm, I'm so glad you called us. Uh, no question about it, Doug. You have two major uh, stressors or factors there, the loss of your parents in that automobile accident, the loss of your job. Uh, Frank, those kinds of losses uh, often lead to depression, do they not? Well, they do. And, and Don, I can't help but think about Nahum 1-7. The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knoweth them that trust in him. The, when people get depressed, they, they get where they can't sleep. When we see that insomnia coming on, it's usually a harbinger of depression, uh, maybe even getting worse. And there's nothing wrong with treating that insomnia. And, uh, you know, again, you might want to go to your local doctor. There are a lot of medicines today that are not addicting. But there are all kinds of medical tools that can, that can begin to turn that around. If, if we start worrying, Doug, there are what we call biogenic amines, serotonin, norepinephrine, and dopamine. And they will initially go up, sort of trying to fight back. But then if the stress continues, they will plummet. And when they go down, cortisol will come up from the adrenal uh, cortex, and when that comes up, there's a chemical called BDNF. It's a chemical that nourishes brain cells. The brain cells get weak, and then they're really just flooded with worries and problems. So what started psychological becomes physiological. So I'd, I would talk with a local doctor. You didn't, you didn't mention, Doug, where you're sort of coming from in your Christianity. Has that, has that been a help for you? Where, where are you there? Well, yeah, and, and in fact, this past year without a job, without a uh, job, has been. Mm. I mean, I've just had. I mean, I've had nothing else to hang mm. on to, but yeah. Christ, and mm. and that has mm. been. Uh, and, and you know, and I was I was denied unemployment. It, it was a. Mm. It was it was it was not good. And you know, I've tried to pick up anything that I could do, and I mean, any little you know part time, you know, temporary jobs which not nearly enough and you know we're struggling and oh, yeah. trying to hmm. get through it and but i know i mean i i know that if i could sleep more it would help my attitude but i mean i may there may be nights i'll only get an hour and a half of sleep at best i may only get you know when i'm extremely exhausted and can't seem to you know fight it in my head yeah i may only, the best i'll get is maybe five or six, maybe. Yeah. And and I believe that if I could ever start getting sleep again, that maybe I could start turning this thing around. I just don't yeah. know how to do that. Frank, are there doctors who specialize in sleep disorders or in insomnia? Yes, there are. And But, Don, for many people, just a local doctor, I mean, those, those guys, I've always been impressed with them. They know a little bit about everything, and they yes. know a, quite a, a lot about insomnia. And so I would talk with them. Many people would just take Benadryl over the counter, but you have to be a little careful about the half-life of that yeah. deal. So even that would be better to talk with your doctor about. There, there are anti, there's medicines now that help sleep. They have a one-hour half-life. So it's good at inducing. There are others that are longer. There's just a variety of medicines that can solve that. So you, you don't have to, to do that. And, and if you could solve that, then that might give you, that might, could lift the uh, mood enough that you could begin to turn it around. Uh, Doug, yeah. why don't you pray for him? Just a neat yeah. person. He loves the Lord, just yeah. run over him a lot. Incidentally, Doug, many things that happen in life, like losing a job, it's not always about the person. I mean, it, it's a tough economy out there, yeah. and it's not always about the person. It's, it's, sometimes it's about life, but, yeah. but part of, of turning it around is to get some sleep, get some rest. Don, let's pray for him. Yeah, let's do that. Heavenly Father, I'm so thankful, Lord, that Doug was able to call in and get to us. Uh, Lord, he's been through so much, losing his parents in this accident, losing his job, not being able to get unemployment. Thank you for his steadfast faith in you. And Lord, like David, uh, he may be asking himself, why are you cast down, O my soul? Why are you disquieted in me? 
Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. And Lord, we pray that that time might come for Doug when he'll be able to yet praise you because of your help and because your face is smiling on him. Thank you that he recognizes your presence. Lord, may the members of the body of Christ there in his area of Kansas reach out to him and shower him with love and encouragement. And Father, we just want to commit him to you. I pray that he'll be able to talk with his doctor, get some help for this sleep issue. May he, as the psalmist said, be able to lay himself down in peace and sleep because you, Lord, only make us to dwell in safety. We commit Doug to you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, thank you. Thank you. Back to the phones where James has been waiting patiently in St. Louis, Missouri. Hello, James. How you doing? Fine. Thanks for calling. Go ahead. I was uh, diagnosed in 06, clinically depressed, and I really never comprehended exactly what that meant, but I've been listening to you, and now I know what it means. That's Um, encouraging. Great. And I've just had so much trauma in my life, it's unbelievable, and I've been holding on to uh, God as tight as I can, but uh, my plate's been getting really full lately, and minus any type of medical insurance and such, I haven't been able to get on meds, and... um, I try to reach out to talk to my brother, and he just tells me I'm very negative. And so I'm, I don't even want to communicate with people anymore because I feel that I'm just negative um, when I'm just really trying to reach out and get some stuff off my chest. And I don't, I'm really starting to crawl back into a hole again. And Yeah. Well, I'm so glad you reached out to us, James. I just think, um, thank the Lord that he prompted you to call in that you were able to get through. Oh, James, it's so good to hear from you. I'm just so glad you called. There are many helps today that are free, my friend. Uh, there's a little group called Celebrate Recovery, and it started out really as a uh, for people, Christians that had gotten into alcohol and drugs, but now it's almost for everything. They're totally free. They're in many churches. Celebrate Recovery. Uh, certainly the MHMRs for people that are medically depressed, uh, many of those are free. Mental health, mental retardation, many, many of those are free, and I would reach out there. Uh, the, the churches themselves, Don, I mean, it's, yes. it's God's institution. Yeah. Uh, you know, so join a little church where they can love you and take care of you and, and minister to you. We should help each other. Don, uh, you know, the, the scriptures say that the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. We would be remiss if we did not pray for James. Yeah, I will do so. Lord, uh, You've heard what James has shared with us. Lord, you're already aware of everything that's going on in his life. Uh, He's been through so much, Lord. It's been just a a great pressure on him. And, and Lord, he feels now like withdrawing and pulling back into a hole. And and yet, Lord, he was willing to reach out to us and to share something of the pain that he's been through. And, And, Lord, he has been through a lot, but he's hanging on to you. I just pray, Lord, that somehow even the encouragement of reaching out to us would prompt him to continue reaching out and that he would find perhaps a support group in his local church, uh, that he would be able to find perhaps a mental health clinic that would be able to furnish him with uh, an evaluation that would get him the medications that he needs to overcome this. And Lord, that he would get support from friends and family that's needed. Thank you for listening to this episode of Encouragement for You with Don Hawkins, host of Encouragement Live Radio and author of over 25 books, including Never Give Up and Master Discipleship Today. You can find more about Don and his books at encouragementlive.org. Encouragement for You is a production of Encouragement Communications with the Salem Web Network and lifeaudio.com. Editing by Phil Gebers, production by Elizabeth Andrade. If you enjoyed what you heard today, we'd love for you to head over to your favorite podcast app and leave us a review. It really does help people find us. Let me take just a second to thank the team at Life Audio for their partnership with us on Encouragement for You. If you go to lifeaudio.com, you'll find dozens of other faith-centered podcasts in their network. They've got shows about prayer, Bible study, parenting, and more. Stay encouraged and join us next time for Encouragement for You.